Vengeance. Welcome Vengeance. to another top five with Crystal Five, guys. Today we're gonna look at the five best decks after the Dead Mine nerfs. The meta hasn't really changed too much, but we are seeing some shift in the power levels of the top decks. So in this video, I will give you the five best performing ones, so you know what to be playing before the new expansion drops. Speaking of drops, drop that like and subscribe if you're new. And you also might want to check out the bell notification so you don't miss out on these top fives, as well as the other guides, card reveals, and other Hearthstone tips. Thank you in advance. Now let's get into it. The first deck on the list to no surprise, is gonna be Pirate Warrior. Pirate Warrior really is striving after the nerfs, because some of its best opponents got nerfed. So naturally, one of the best decks that did get nerfed is now probably the best deck out there. In this version, we have a few more pirates, including Ratchet Privateer, and we're not running the chunky Rancors, and instead we have Manda Cannons, for faster early game removals. You can combo this off with Baroth, or you can also kill your own Baroth with Shivered Adder Timbers. The plan here is simple, finish your quest fast and smack him in the face. You are running a single weapon, which is the one mana whetstone, and that way you make sure you have an easy way of equipping a weapon so you can start swinging for your weapon synergies like Defias, Foxail and such, without having to worry about the mana, cause more often than not you've probably already played a Bloodsail before that. Everything else is basically standard Pirate Warrior business. For the matchups, as you can see, only Quest Canned Warlock might be a problem for you, but everything else is at least 50% or a lot more. Even Aggro Druids are good for you nowadays because you have earlier board removals. For the Mulligan, I'm gonna show you a list with one Provoke instead of Baroth, so you have a better idea what to do with and without the coin. When going first, this is what it looks like, basically keeping your cheap pirates, and when going second, you want some removal as well from time to time. But again, basically the plan is to keep your cheap pirates. It would still be wise if you keep Manda Cannons or Shiver Dire Timbers against classes you know will be playing minions early on. Other than that, for Warrior, the only alternative to Quest Pirate Warrior would be Big Warrior, but it doesn't really look too hot, so I would advise you to stick to Pirate Warrior for now. Even though Rush also seemed like it's making a comeback, it doesn't seem to be holding so far. Next up, let's check out the Phase Buff Hunter. In Top Legend, this seems to be the best performing list so far, but as you guys probably noticed, I have been cutting one piercing shot for one True Aim Crescent, and I advise you to do the same, because it really works wonderfully in this deck. Piercing Shot is cool and all, but it's a 4 mana spell, and it's usually a finisher, whereas True Aim Crescent can be super flexible for you, and you can be using it in the early game for trading, in the mid game for rhino action, and in the late game as a finisher with rhinos again. You could also abuse the immune for ramming mount, as long as you put the ramming mount on the first minion that is going to be swinging for the Shrame Crescent. Don't forget that the order in which the minions swing is the order in which you have played them, so it would be wise for you to remember who you played first so you know what to buff. Other than that, Arcane Anomaly goes pretty big with all the small spells, Interpit feels pretty great, especially if you put some big buffs on him. And again, you have Barracoda Bane, which draws you a lot of spells, including now Ramming Mount and also Doggy Biscuit. So be careful not to be thinking you're only getting burned from him nowadays. For the matchups, the only really bad one seems to be Big Warrior, but also Quest Shaman might be a little bit on the fence for you. If you guys checked my last video for Buff Hunter, you're gonna see I really stomped ladder with it, and it really feels like it can be winning any matchup. So I do advise you to check this video out, as well as this deck. Again, for the mulligan you can just check my guide from the last time, but here's the stats when going first, and here's what it looks like when going second. For other hunter decks, you could also try the standard face hunter version, but also quest hunter can be taking you really high legend as long as you know what you're doing with it. And the third deck on the list is gonna be aggro druid again, but this is actually the drektar version, which I showed you in my drektar and vandar top decks video. Having to cut down the panthers and the big taunts leaves room for a lot of interesting cards like jerry rig, soul of the soil, and even dreaming drake, but I would advise you to actually include moonlit guidance in this deck because it's basically tracking for druid, and with drektar being in your deck and having to handicap yourself not to be running the big boys, you best be able to find drektar on time, because if you don't find him on time, it's basically pointless for you to be handicapping yourself and not even being able to benefit from him. The other upside to Boonlet Guidance here would be that if you find Drektar, you're basically gonna be able to play him twice, which is gonna be huge for you. So you might wanna tone down one less Jerry Rig, or maybe even a one less Peasant. So you can fit in two Moonlit Guidances in here, and I do believe you're gonna be more happy than not. For the matchups, Big Priest, Quest Mage, Quest Rogue, Quest Shaman, and Quest Warlock will be problematic, but the rest is pretty green. 
for the mulligan you might want to check out my aggro druid guide, cause it's basically the same, aside from Drektar always being a keep, because he's just that good. With and without the coin, it's by far the best thing you could be keeping here. For other good druid decks, the normal aggro druid with the big boy taunt is still doable, Clown Druid is actually pretty good, Malagos Druid is pretty good as well, and Anaconda Celestial Druid is probably gonna be good in skilled hands too, but it's very hard to pilot optimally, so keep that in mind. Next up, we have Hand Warlock again. The new mini set gave it strong support with the Shadow Blade Slingers, deal with the early game boards a lot easier, and you can raise that dose so you can do them all over again. This version is still not using the weapon, because Hand Warlock doesn't really utilize that anymore after that nerf for the weapon. But everything else is basically the same Hand Warlock. For the matchups, Face Hunter is still pretty strong against you, but the buff Face Hunter is a little bit weaker, so keep that in mind. Quest Mage is also pretty 50-50, but you will not see too many of those nowadays. But the rest seems to be green for the popular matchups. I'm not much of a quest hand warlock player myself, so I'm just gonna show you the stats for the mulligan when you're going first and when you're going second, and you'll use that information how you like. For warlock we also have quest warlock without the giants, which basically tries to kill your opponent with fatigue damage after you've completed the quest. There's also a quest zoo variant which looks pretty interesting, there's also just a zoo warlock, and the rest is iterations of the same. And the last deck on the list is gonna be Librem Paladin again, because it's so simple to climb to legend with it. This time it's just Librem Paladin, and that means you have room for brooms, city techs, bear off, and also Librem of Justice. This version also has room for two Sunwing Squawkers, and that way you can cheat out extra buffs like Librems of Wisdom or Hands of a Doll. But you can even use this with a Librem of Hope if you feel like it. We also have a Noble Mount, which also gets cheated on on the Parrot, but the rest is basically just Librem Paladin. For the matchups, Quest Rogue might be a problem for you, because they can return the minions back to your hand, basically, but as you can see, everything else is pretty green, aside from Aggro Druid, which is gonna be a 50-50. For the Mulligan Guide, there's not enough stats already, but basically, Aldor Attendant is gonna be always a good keep for you, Librem of Wisdom if you already have Aldor Attendant, Murger is not bad, so you have some early game, Alliance Batterman is pretty good as well, and if you're going second, Samuro also is very decent most of the time. And same goes for Cariel, because she can remove something big while remaining on the board. And this counts your hand holy spells too. When going second you can sometimes also afford to keep Aldor Truthseeker, but only keep him if you already curve into him. For other paladin decks, hand buff paladin is pretty good and secret Librem as well. There's also a Vondar paladin like I showed you from last time, but as you can see the stats are still not too flattering for him. For the classes I didn't mention, let's see what are the best working decks for them so far. For Demon Hunter, Deathrattle Demon Hunter is actually doing pretty good, with inclusion of Jace. Big Demon Hunter is also actually pretty decent, without Vondar. We also have Just Quest Demon Hunter, and in Top 1000 Legend, Quest Lifesteal Demon Hunter is also still pretty strong, but you're not gonna see it from Diamond to Legend. For Mage, Quest Mage is still at the top, despite some people trying to make Mazaki Mage look better. It's not but it's still above 50%, so if you wanna try that, go for it. With Priest, Aggro Shadow Priest is at the top, but also Big Priest with Vondor is doing pretty fine as well, so you might wanna check that as well. And Rally Priest is just above 50%. With Rogue, Quest Rogue took the crown for the best deck for Rogue right now, but Garrett Rogue is still actually doable, and Poison Rogue is also acceptable. And with Shaman, Aggro Elemental Shaman is doing pretty great right now. Just Elemental Shaman is pretty decent too, Quest Shaman is also pretty high in the win rate, but it looks like that's about it for now. So that's gonna be it for this top 5 guys, I hope this helps you figure out what you wanna be playing before the new expansion drops. Don't forget you can also check me out on Twitch and see me play some of these live on stream in top 1000 legend. Thanks for watching, I'm Crystal5 and I'll see you in my next video or stream.